Now, SpaceX has pulled off its boldest test flight yet of its enormous Starship rocket catching the returning booster back at the launch pad with mechanical arms, a manoeuvre hailed as a spectacular that's set to change and boost space flights. To talk more about it, I'm joined by our science editor, Julia Seeger. Hello, Julia. Hi, Annette. So, SpaceX, once again reaching a crucial milestone uh, this weekend with its fifth Starship demonstration flight. Feels like they're in the news every day almost now, but uh, indeed Starship blasted off at sunrise from the Boca Chica base in uh, Texas for its fifth test flight. Now, uh, Starship is actually a gigantic launcher. It was designed as early as 2020 by SpaceX to uh, send men, but also equipment first to the moon as part of NASA's uh, Artemis program, but also perhaps in a more distant future to Mars. Now, uh, there were four test flights before this, of course, and every time there were issues, but uh, every time also improvements were added to the rocket. And the objective of this fifth test flight was, of course, a successful separation of the stages, a successful suborbital flight, but also, and more importantly, to be able to catch and bring back the first stage of the rocket back on its launch pad, this uh, first stage of the rocket, which is called the Super Heavy, uh, and to be able to do so with a tower that's equipped with mechanical arms. Now, it sounds quite frugal, uh, but this was actually successful. This is a first, and they were able to achieve all three objectives. Now, if we look a little more closely at the rocket itself, well, here, yeah, you just saw the, the picture of, of, of it landing, but if you look more closely at the rocket, it's huge, as I said. It's the largest and most powerful in the world, towering almost 400 feet. And if you look just the super heavy tower, it's about 230 feet, and it has about 30 engines just to give you an idea of the type of weight that we're talking about here. Uh, and the other focus, of course, was the launch, and now we can call it the return also tower, uh, which was dubbed Mechazilla for Mechanical and Godzilla. Uh, and uh, we also nicknamed those arms chopsticks because, as I said, they really seem quite frugal, uh, but they were able to bring it back, bring it back to the launch pad. Now, of course, uh, this was huge for SpaceX employees. They screamed in joy. We all saw uh, these pictures because perhaps themselves, they, they couldn't believe it because perhaps of also how much experts had been pessimistic about the outcome of this uh, return or this landing of the booster. Now, several days before the launch, SpaceX didn't even know if they were going to be able to make this maneuver because they were waiting for an approval by uh, the uh, American aviation regulator, the FAA, and they took their time to give the decision, but a few, uh, few hours before the flight, they gave their green light. Indeed, making space exploration a recycling procedure at the same time. And uh, why is this landing such a technological feat, Julia? Well, first because of the weight of the launcher, as I told you, also because of the precision that they um, that they demonstrated, and also because they made it on, on the first try. So we'll have to wait and see if they can actually do that again. Uh, but it's going to be key because it's going to reduce the time between launches, and that's something SpaceX is very much attached to. It's going to save them millions. Uh, but but it's also going to change in a big way, uh, indeed, space exploration, but also human exploration of space. So uh, we'll have to wait, but it is indeed a huge technological feat. And the American aviation regulator giving SpaceX, as you say, the green light, it also authorised yet another test flight. And, and this has sparked controversy, hasn't it, over concerns about the impact of these launches on the surrounding environment? There's always, uh, of course, concern over the debris, first of all, because uh, this time around the, the super heavy was, uh, you know, recovered and the upper. But when you look at the upper stage, for instance, it made a control landing uh, in the ocean and it, it exploded. Those are the pictures that you're seeing now. And it exploded uh, shortly after impact. And uh, but at the same time, this is why SpaceX wants to make it reusable to be able to also to reduce the amount of debris, because we know that space exploration, uh, you know, creates quite a lot of debris. Uh, there's also complaints over the high quality, the high quantity of water that's used, because every time that you uh, that you spark up, you turn up the uh, the engines, you have to use a lot of water, uh, one, because you have to attenuate the acoustic waves uh, and also limit the vibrations. And there's also environmental concern because of the well-being of local uh, animals, local animal species, because right next to the space base is actually a, a protected area. So 
how come SpaceX is managing to move forward so quickly with its technological innovations? Well, one of the reasons it's, is its iterative and pragmatic approach. The uh, fail fast, learn fast uh, uh, principle really sums up its mindset. It, it really has adopted a strategy of frequent testing in real, uh, real time conditions, and that makes it possible for them to validate each subsystem in various scenarios. And that's something that other uh, manufacturers, such as uh, REM Group, that makes Ariane 6, for instance, is not doing. And that's perhaps why they're falling back. Another reason is Elon Musk. We have to say it that uh, he understands the physics behind it. And that's maybe the difference with, for instance, a Jeff Bezos uh, that is also involved in space exploration but is not seeing the same results. And uh, he's, uh, he's quite visionary, at least when it comes to those systems. When it comes to the mechanical arms, there's this video online where he really is explaining to his uh, to his engineers how he's you know seeing those, those arms. And they're literally telling him, you're, you're crazy. Uh, and here we are a couple of years later. So uh, he is indeed also part of, of, of this success. But I think uh, you know, effective iteration is also a huge part of their success. Julia Seeger, thank you so much for that.